بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سید فاروق حسن از بیک ود ا نیو ایپیسوڈ اف سکائی از دا لیمٹ ایز یو آل نو آئی ٹرائی اینڈ شو کیس انڈیویجوئلز ہو ہیو ڈن سم تھنگ بگ فار دا کنٹری ہو ہیو کنٹریبیوٹڈ ٹو دا اکانومی ٹو دا ٹو دے اون کنٹری ہو بوٹ لورلز فار دے کنٹری ٹوڈے آئی ہیپن ٹو بی سٹنگ ود ا ویری ویری برائٹ dynamic, brilliant, brave individual. I'm sitting with Dr. Bakhtawar Khalid Kiani. Now, what is her distinction? Dr. Bakhtawar Khalid Kiani is a dentist. She's done dentistry. She got a silver medal. She got three distinctions. Besides that, she's also pursuing the sport of archery. She is also the first Asian female visually impaired archer who has the honor of representing Pakistan in the International Blind Sports World Championship. Archery is a sport which is usually associated with men. How did she get into archery? Having, she's a specially abled person. She's done her dentistry. She's pursuing her MBA and she has that fighter spirit in herself. That made her an apt guest for Sky is the Limit. So let's talk to Dr. Bakhtawar. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Bakhtawar. Wa alaikum assalam. What a pleasure to be here. I am so honored with your achievement. In fact, the whole Pakistan is honored. And I am glad that I am sitting and having this conversation with you so you can share your journey of success with all the world. Thank you. I just Great. want to share that. I am actually honored to be a Pakistani, to be representing Pakistan at different uh, levels and uh, to be part of this uh, nation. And that's, I'm just putting my foot forward to uh, showcase what this nation means to me. Absolutely great. That, that's an amazing thought. So, Bhaktawar, um, we'll, we'll start from the start. Um, where were you born? How was your uh, initial uh, life, your early childhood, your school days, your siblings, who was, who had more influence on you? And when did you start feeling that, you know, you are slightly, your eyesight is deteriorating? Can you just run us through your life journey? Because, Hassan, I, I surely can. Yeah. Uh, I, I was born in Rawalpindi, mm -hmm. um, Pakistan, and then um, I started, uh, Uh, my early education over here then i moved to bahalpur and i uh, did some part of my education over there also mm -hmm. then i came back to sambad and which school was that sadik public school uh, in no. bahalpur it was convent okay uh, here it was uh, in a, a pindi it was some sort of nursery i can't remember their name okay uh, but in uh, uh, sambad then when i came back uh, i went to beacon house okay. i did all my studies from beacon house i did my uh, matriculation from a settler town branch okay. and then I did my um, FSC from OPF mm -hmm. and then uh, after that uh, completing my education I had a dream to become a doctor okay uh, because well, you didn't want to become a doctor right from childhood uh, no, yeah uh, when I was a child when uh, people used to ask me and my sister what do you want to be become yeah. uh, we would answer uh, president of Pakistan so <laughs> We, okay. we used to aim high when you were even small. One. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. that is why, uh, so uh, that uh, one thing, my mom is a teacher, so one thing I knew, okay, I don't want to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I had only that restriction. Otherwise, I, I would aspire everything. Uh, every time it was a new aspiration to become something else. But uh, while I was studying, I found that I like biology. So okay. I thought that uh, why not uh, become a doctor? Pursue it. Okay. Yeah, pursue that. I, I have four siblings uh, and uh, I'm, I'm from a single parent family, okay. but my father is also very supportive. Are you the eldest in the house? No, uh, my sister is the eldest mm -hmm. and uh, she runs a, a tech company called Vue Okay. Uh, it's a software house okay. uh, that works with startups okay. and uh, then uh, I'm the second child okay. and then I have two brothers. Okay. Uh, one is One is a customer and salesperson okay. in um, a tr a training impact organization okay. and then um, my younger brother is working in a software house 
because he has done a software engineering. So very yeah. nice, very nice. So tell us about your early uh, school days. Like uh, you had complete eyesight, six by six yeah. at that time, right? Yeah. So you had a full, bright childhood. So yeah. how were you as a student? Like were you the naughty kid in the class, or were you the very sober teacher's pet kind of a, a student? What kind of person were you? Uh, uh, Okay, I, I would say I would be the in-between thing. I was precocious from the uh, early childhood, but I would also follow the rules or uh, be responsible. Okay. So that's why in class 5 I was like uh, house captain or uh, um, my, uh, I was sports captain also. So things like that, I was given responsibility just because I, I, I used to take those responsibilities. But I was also precocious, I would I love to play games and I do different experiences which I have still continued in my life. I like to climb trees. I oh, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I like um, I like to jump in seas. So uh, th that is uh, still part of my life. I think so. I haven't lost my childhood okay. up till now. Okay. But um, were you a bright kid, like uh, intelligent? Uh, like in your studies, were you like the top three category? Or were you like average? Or were you in the last quarter? No, I was very average. Average? <laughs> yeah. So I you enjoyed your school days? Yeah. Huh? I, That's what I always say. Really, okay. Yeah, I, I became a bit better in my university. But mm -hmm. before that, I was very average. That's why I had to go to private medical college. Ah, yeah. So how did you expect to become the president uh, if you were an average student? President is not about uh, academics, right? Ah. Uh, school is all about academics. Ah. But being president, uh, is was not actually about um, uh, actually being there, but it was about seeing that we are able to change something in Pakistan, or we are able to contribute in Pakistan. So okay. we were always raised a patriotic uh, s uh, family, yeah. uh, and uh, we always knew that uh, whatever we are taking from the society, we have to give back, and we have to. What a noble thought, and I wish everyone thinks like that. Tell me, were you uh, good, active in sports and dramatics and debates also during school days, or were you just like, you know, just playing around, you know, like, yeah. you know, with your friends and all and all going out and all that stuff? Uh, no, not uh, not as such. Uh, I I was uh, active in sports, but. Uh, from early childhood, I had a uh, little hand-eye coordination, mm -hmm. which we later associated with my eye condition. But at that time, we had no idea. So um, I was good at sports because I was so much enthusiastic in um, becoming part of them. So uh, that's why. But um, my hand-eye coordination wasn't that good. Okay. Uh, I'm not a very social uh, person. You, you were like slightly introvert. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, maybe at school times, I think so. I, I was not introvert. I was uh, extrovert, but now I have become introvert. Okay. Uh, after developing developing my condition, I think so that I reconfigured uh, that uh, aspect of myself, and then uh, now I'm a bit more introvert or ambivert. What we? Uh, uh, I would yeah. think the otherwise. I think you've done so. M you brought laurels to Pakistan. You've participated in this international blind sports world championship as the first Asian female visually impaired archer, you got silver medal, you got three distinctions in your dentistry. You should be the most extrovert person. That's what I feel. I, I feel that um, because uh, being extrovert is related to uh, getting energy from uh, large gatherings. Yes. But uh, I, I feel like I need to regain my energy whenever I go out uh, yeah. or meet people. So that's why uh, I've being introvert. Okay, but I must yeah. tell you that you've been very brave for having, uh, you know, like not making this, uh, uh, you know, this disability uh, that you've developed over time uh, into something which can bog you down. And uh, you know, you're continuing with your normal life, you're pursuing your MBA, and you're participating in one of the most difficult sports. Actually, my God, I could never ever think of lifting a bow and arrow and you know practicing archery we'll come to that uh, a bit later so uh, you did your uh, o levels uh, uh, no i did my metric because I, I i i thought that i was going to do my i knew that i was going to do my doctorate so uh, for that uh, i thought that o levels is equivalence and everything in pakistan it's better to have metric okay and fsa okay so you, did you get good marks in my metric 
Average marks. Okay. I, I just uh, uh, went to pri uh, private medical dental college. So okay, well, well, we'll come to that later. Yeah. So first, your pre-medical, right? FSC. Yeah. You must have done your FSC. Yeah. So once you finish your matric, it was decided by your family or yourself that you want to become a doctor, right? Yeah. You you decided you were okay with it because biology was <laughs> that, one of your. That was students. my own choice. That was your own yeah, choice. Yeah. And dentistry was your own choice also because you couldn't get admission in the other <laughs> no. So it was everything played part. You know? <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, so which college did you go to? Do you, where did you I do your FSC from? Uh, for FSC, I went to OPF. OPF, okay. Yeah. And then uh, for my dentistry, I went to Islamabad Medical and Dental College. IMDC, yeah. all right. And then you suddenly become one of the most intelligent students and get a silver medal. How did that happen? Because I knew that now this is serious. This is like I, I will deal with patients. Okay. So that's why I, I, I can't really. And always getting admission into a university is the very hard part. Mm -hmm. So once you are over that, now you really know that this education, what it costs and <laughs> you yeah. have to. You become have, mature, yeah. you become slightly more serious. aware of your society and your parents contribution and you feel like now it's time to get serious in life, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So and that was uh, the impetus in uh, getting this. Okay. So then you suddenly got serious in your studies and you suddenly discovered that you're in a very bright and individual student mm -hmm. and you can get a silver medal. Yeah? Yeah. And then it continued. You got three distinctions also? Yeah. Wow. Uh, and tell us about that. Uh, so I stood second in first year. Uh, that's why I got the silver medal and I got one distinction in first year and then I got two distinctions in second year. And mm -hmm. then after that I <laughs> developed a condition. Okay. So, so how did, so you were in your second year when you developed this condition of uh, uh, Yeah. In second year I started noticing that I wasn't able to see uh, things at night. Okay. Uh, th that I was able to see in the morning. So it oh. starts with night blindness. Okay. So uh, that's when I started to notice and then I had a, mm, uh, I, I had a, family member who already had this condition who you who lives in UK currently okay. and um, so uh, that's why I knew that I have family history of uh, a condition called retinitis pigmentosa uh -huh. in which your um, eye cells degenerate uh, and that's why you start to lose eyesight and there's no cure for this there's no cure for it mm -hmm. and it's uh, the even the diagnosis is exclusive diagnosis you have to exclude all possible conditions and then you will say that this is the condition that you have so it took me almost one year to get diagnosed and uh, to go to different hospitals and mm. uh, and while I was studying BDS. So uh, Bakhtawar in, in third year you realized or uh, this thing started happening that you are slowly uh, your eyesight is deteriorating and because of this family condition that you just mentioned uh, you felt that you know this is going on the wrong side. I'm sure it must have come as a big, big shock, you know, like for a person who can see who has six by six eyesight, who can see everything and suddenly you start feeling that, you know, you're not able to see that well and the situation is deteriorating and you can't do anything about it. That is a real, uh, you know, it bogs you down. How did you deal with it? Um, I, I say that I, I usually uh, don't have that much foresight of how things are going to turn out. Okay. So that is why I actually, I do plan things long term, but I don't know how they are going to turn out. So I, I just knew at that moment that I have just to pass BDS. Mm -hmm. That that was the goal that my family gave me. And you were in third year at that time. There were two more years to go. Yeah. So um, um, uh, what my family supported me was to go to psychologists and different people who, who, who would be able to help me because my family, uh, a distant relation had this condition uh, who was not even in Pakistan. So nobody knew how to deal with persons with disability or uh, a visually impaired person. So uh, that was a new challenge for them also. Okay. Uh, and then uh, so they, they told me that maybe uh, I can visit psychologists or uh, get some therapy to understand how to cope with this condition. Okay. And uh, there I uh, learned that at this moment I actually need to see my journey as a separate journey than other uh, people's journey and also I, I need first goal that my father actually gave me was that complete dentistry and then uh, I will get you a clinic set up or something like that. Okay. So though I never got that clinic set up, 
but that was uh, he just showed me a picture at the moment that was a motivation yeah, for you that motivation okay that there's something in the end of this dentistry because uh, i will be able to do something because i never wanted to go in academics as i said i, I didn't want to teach uh, so uh, i i i had a vision of becoming a doctor but he told me that if if you are not even uh, going to become a doctor we will have a clinic where you uh, you can just manage that clinic and people okay. can practice in it okay so i had that vision uh, while uh, completing my dentistry that maybe that will be okay. happening okay unfortunately that wasn't be, uh, able to happen but uh, still uh, it gave me that motivation to pass bds uh, there was a the light at the end of the tunnel and that you were striving to achieve that okay now my goal is that i need to complete my studies so that i have a future where i can practice in that clinic or run that clinic right yeah and that motivated you yeah I, right. i had no idea how my life is going to turn out what uh, uh, things are going to become a hindrance uh, what things i may not be able to do yeah. and then uh, my friends were really helpful also in this um, incidents because uh, they used to uh, our medical books are very yeah, thick, thick and they are very small uh, uh, letters yeah. written over there so uh, by the fourth year i wasn't able to read them Okay. so uh, they would read to me and because i had a good base i i did my studies at the f uh, first and second year so now i was able to uh, actually i say that uh, i was just able to grasp some part of the question and mm -hmm. answer it and then somehow i passed wow and so uh, so um, as i just mentioned so your life changed 180 uh, when you, you know this happened but you were still attending classes like a normal student yeah like with your friends and you were taking lectures but obviously you would have had difficulty to write down your notes mm -hmm. and to read the content material and you're saying that your friends helped you to they would you know read it out to you or explain it to you verbally mm -hmm. and your exams that you gave you know was it, was there a special methodology or you gave them how did you write your exams no. because uh, so uh, i wasn't able to see uh, what i have written with the pen so whenever i prepared at home i used to write with a marker at that moment or uh, then my friends used to st uh, study with me so we did all the group studies mm. but uh, fortunately allah helped me mm -hmm. that uh, i had uh, the preparation for uh, me uh, in exams was because there was no precedence of having a uh, some support person in uh, these medical exams so i had my uh, magnifiers uh, i had my father uh, the way he helped me was to get me all kind of magnifiers i have this box where i have every kind of magnifier uh, which is not useful for me right now because i can't see the paper right now but at that time when i was able to see uh, th things uh, mm -hmm. once magnified uh, so uh, so i i had that with me uh, in the exams but what happened was that um, our university uh, used to be barrier university but then it changed uh, the affiliated uh, university uh, for imdc okay. then it changed to zebest and they changed the format of the paper uh, the font size mm -hmm. and uh, the bold uh, writing so uh, my final paper was in bold and the font size was a bit larger that was specially for you no that was for everybody okay. but allah did it that uh, the way uh, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah the way uh, he planned it if he would have would it would not have had it mm. paper would have been difficult for me yeah, but and that was your final exam yeah mm. that was my final exam and um, so he uh, helped me in that uh, way that i was able wow. to give my final exam because i remember um, uh, in my third year i had a mid exam which was a bit misprint and that was such st stressful for me to sit in a classroom uh, with everybody Uh, where people are writing or uh, giving the exam and i can't even see the paper uh, like i was able to see the paper but i wasn't able to read the question then i, I actually d d did not even yeah. write anything and i left that paper so ah. so it was a toss when i was giving my final paper that uh, will th things turn out well or but no, no. that was belief or i think so a faith that uh, believe faith and i think your uh, resilience to counter this uh, situation that you were facing i think that played a, a big big role uh, your courage your resilience that i i will make it happen 
you know so if you if there's a will there's a way that that's what they always say you wanted to do it so you did it mm -hmm. any special friend that you'd like to mention who really help you out uh, out uh, of the way i have uh, i have three best friends uh, mm -hmm. who uh, who were there mm -hmm. for me uh, kanza varka and rutaba so yeah okay. they have kanza me. varka and rutaba yeah. you know you've done a great job and i wish every girl has friends like you all three right so i wanted to mention them also, specially because i will share this with them yeah yeah you yeah. do that you do and make sure they watch they're watching this program yeah yeah so tell me uh, so you finished your um, uh, dentistry but now what was your aim because you are almost uh, you know your eyesight had deteriorated to quite a, an extent mm -hmm. and you had finished your uh, dentistry your plan was to open a clinic or establish a clinic what was the next step what happened after that? Uh, the thing that happened was um, so uh, just after uh, pa passing the exam before even my result came out uh, my mom uh, took me to this organization called pakistan foundation fighting blindness pffb yeah yes where uh, where there are other people who uh, who re rehabilitate people with visual impairment okay and there i got to meet people uh, with visual impairment and see i saw their lifestyle i saw how how to become an independent uh, person as a visually impaired person so that was a good uh, learning for me uh, while uh, i was uh, over there uh, getting rehabilitated because i would go daily over there okay i would just go and spend my entire day so they so would counsel you or there was there like what was the they would counsel me they would uh, teach me how to use computers ah. uh, uh, they would uh, so in uh, they, they would uh, uh, i would meet uh, new cases new people uh, who are visually impaired who are doing different things in their life mm -hmm. oh, uh, and then uh, at, at the end i was able to actually become a mentor in that uh, program uh so uh, that was um, while that was happening yeah. i got my result for uh, bds okay. the, um, then i uh, actually applied for my house job uh, you have to apply in the same yes. hospital yes. and when i applied my hospital did not give me a house job oh my so, god yeah they were like um uh, they were like you know uh, you should go for some leadership programs and uh, maybe you can become a motivational speaker and i'm like Hmm. I want to do dentistry. Huh. Why are you denying exactly. me this? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I, so okay. I uh, and that was not. I was just sitting over there. My mom was also sitting over there. My mamu was also sitting over there, and uh, they called everybody just to tell us that they are not going to offer me a house job. Hmm. So, um, that happened uh, while I was uh, being rehabilitated. I got rehabilitated, and I actually started. Uh, first i thought that um, okay four year degree went gone down the drain go, gone down the drain then uh, somebody uh, encouraged me that, uh, that uh, uh, you should apply to pmdc uh, they are the regulatory body pakistan medical and Health commission mm -hmm. and uh, if they grant you ha house job then um, no one can deny yeah it. yeah no one can deny it. So, so but uh, everybody uh, whom i would share this idea would Uh, they would uh, tell me that uh, it's very hard that pmdc listens to uh, mm -hmm. and uh, because there's no precedence for your case okay so you uh, you don't have a precedence of a visually impaired person uh, a doctor who would go for a house job yeah okay yeah so but uh, uh, me and my mom went there for two years mm -hmm. and i got finally you succeeded yeah <laughs> yeah wow another point see resilience exactly So, but we weren't expecting uh, that uh, i would uh, we would succeed but then they uh, granted me a house job and i completed that and at that time i was uh, then i started working in development sector so my mom uh, had this idea that if you sit at home she will get depressed so mm -hmm. keep her engaged mm -hmm. i was going to ngos social work also but i was uh, doing my job over uh, in some uh, development organization for two uh, years while i was visiting pmdc i was also working in development sector in accountability lab as an incubator lead so okay. th uh, that actually helped me to realize okay okay if even if i'm not a doctor what else can i achieve mm -hmm. so i started there as an intern and then i became the lead <laughs> project a uh, person uh, for uh, the incubation program so that really bolstered my confidence that okay 
I can achieve something in my life uh, if uh, if I don't have my eyesight. Mm -hmm. So uh, that really helped me in understanding that. And then once I got my house job, I I completed that. You finished your house job. Yeah, I completed my wow. house job. I'm a licensed doctor, but I can't practice. You can't so practice. that. Okay. Is an, but I'm sure there are so many other things you can do, and you're doing your MBA, and we yeah. we're going to talk about that. And uh, you know. I have to take a short break, but once we come back from the break, I want to know why and how did you land up in archery? That's a very tough sport and usually associated with men. So how did you get into that? Yes, I'm in conversation with Dr. Bakhtavar Kiani. Uh, what a bright individual, what a resilient individual. Uh, so many uh, success stories that I bring to you, but this is one of the most inspiring ones till date that I've uh, encountered. We're going to take a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sky's the Limit. This is Sayyid Farooq Hassan. I am in conversation with Dr. Bakhtawar Khalid Kayani, uh, an individual who participated in International Blind Sports World Championship 2023 as the first ever Asian female visually impaired archer. She is a distinguished dentist. She got silver medal and got three distinctions. And she has done a lot, a very, very resilient individual. So. Tell me, uh, Dr. Bakhtawar, what happened after that once you, uh, you know, you were associated with this startup and then uh, you started working for PMDC also at that time? Uh, no, before working, uh, be working from PMDC, I actually, uh, uh, when I was working in the development sector, I met yeah. a, a lady who told me that um, there are visually impaired people who are, uh, who are playing visually impaired archery. So okay. I was really intrigued by the sport. That, okay. uh, uh, had you heard of it before archery? No, I have. I had not heard of uh, visually impaired archery. Plus, I uh, I knew that uh, there are some sports that visually impaired people uh, play, but they are usually uh, they start at a young age. So archery had no age limit. So I was intrigued. That is some sport that I can also play. And um, as I told you, uh, I was when I was young, I I was really enthusiastic about. You're sports. still young. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, I, I actually then I visited Lakhat Bagh Ralpindi Sports Complex, and um, there uh, my there's a uh, training uh, academy. There, there's a uh, training academy. They had a boot camp. Uh, the coach uh, is called uh, Muhammad Ijaz, and mm -hmm. he is an athletic coach uh, for government, but he also teaches visually impaired archery uh, as a passion, and uh, uh, he actually taught me uh, with. Uh, and the, uh, there I learned and when once I experienced that sport I mm. thought that why not do it uh, yeah why not play it regularly wow. but isn't that um, archery has to have the eye and hand coordination isn't it such a sport exactly it's uh, it's that sport uh, but uh, the way visually impaired archery is played uh, you actually uh, you actually redesign that sport not to have a hand-eye coordination, but to have entire muscle and body movement control. Okay. Because you have a frame, so I play on 30 meters um, okay. uh, outdoors. So uh, th if my target is uh, like 30 meters away from me, yeah, I w I'm not able to see it, right? Mm -hmm. So I, the a place where I'm standing, I have a fr frame. It's called tactile viewfinder, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, that is just placed alongside me. Uh, and uh, it is uh, at the height of the target and then it has a pointer that uh, points towards the yellow of the target. So uh, in my bow hand, I will just touch that uh, frame. So I will know where the target is located, where the general direction of the target is. The idea is just to control my entire body movement that I, uh, I angle my arrow in such a way that it hits the bullseye or uh, it hits the target. Plus, uh, it keeps repeating that motion. 
even if I breathe, the angle will change. Even if I move my hand the, uh, for the bow, the angle will change. So that that is the entire game that you have to have that focus, mm. that uh, focus on concentration. Con yeah, the control on body movement, uh, which will enable you to uh, actually shoot that. So when you started it, the first few days you thought that you're gonna you like it. Uh, you you had yeah. that instant liking feeling, right? Exactly. But you started off. At, at a very novice amateur level, right? Yeah. But then how did this, uh, when was this? About how many years back did you start? Three years. Three years back. Yeah. So within three years, how did you consider yourself good enough that, okay, I am going to participate in the international games now? Yeah. How did that happen? My, mo uh, my family is really supportive. So okay. because, um, uh, so uh, when I uh, played over there, um, then I wasn't able to uh, commute every day to Rawalpindi. So then I started playing in a, a local uh, club in Islamabad with normal athletes, uh, normal uh, mm -hmm. archery club. And I started to play over there. So uh, I would go over there and uh, uh, I would practice over there. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so I was practicing. And then uh, in 2022, um, some of the visually impaired male archers uh, were going to a world championship and uh, they needed fundraising. So uh, they asked my mom to help and uh, my mom helped uh, them to raise funds. And uh, and that time the World Championship was happening in Dubai. So my mom told me that uh, while they are going, why don't we just visit there uh, uh, to see the sport as spectator Okay. and see how it's played in the international community. So uh, last year I was able to uh, visit uh, uh, Dubai to uh, experience this game as a spectator and that was the experience the impetus that led me to uh, actually play this internationally this mm -hmm. year because uh, the, I was able to see the entire community international community over there okay uh, I was actually uh, my mom was able to see how this game is actually played mm -hmm. and uh, what are the rules or what uh, what things we need to have uh, at that time uh, so uh, that actually prepared us and then uh, we had um, a long documentation process this year with uh, Pakistan Archie Federation uh, and uh, then I have act I was actually preparing since February for this competition okay uh, and then I was able to uh, participate Join in there. August yeah so did you feel proud when you know you went there and you realized that you were the first Asian uh, female who is participating visually impaired uh, games uh, did you feel like pride uh, yeah. carrying Pakistani flag yeah that uh, that was uh, my honor to uh, uh, to represent Pakistan uh, and to represent positive image of Pakistan yeah. that, that was uh, like my childhood dream come true yeah. because as a president what I w wanted to do was uh, to contribute something to Pakistan so yeah. that, that was I was able to realize that dream and um, it's amazing how I was able to realize that as a child, I, I did not even know about archery. So mm. there was something totally Allah new. makes Absolutely. ways that you uh, you can't actually Absolutely. see at the time. Absolutely. So how was the experience there? So you went there, you participated. How, which level did you go up to? And what are your future? Do you want to continue with it? Are you going to go next year also? What are your plans? Um, so uh, I, uh, the experience of this, um, Oh, really great mm -hmm. because um, I, I met the the competition was actually uh, with uh, 14 blind games uh, were uh, held at the competition mm -hmm. so there were uh, cricket uh, uh, blind cricket players there were blind judo players there were blind uh, blind uh, football players so there was uh, 14 similar games happening in uh, one area so that was really interesting and then there were 70 different countries so, so being able to see that see that uh, how that it works and uh, able to meet those people that was uh, very empowering uh, while I was playing the games uh, I was able to reach the second level where I competed with Germany okay and then um, in that I wasn't able to proceed further but uh, that was uh, uh, the first time I was practicing I was practicing with uh, the uh, previous world champion who also stood uh, first in this uh, category uh, called Steve. He uh, he is uh, from my category. So uh, I was just practicing with him and I asked for what is your name. So he told me Steve. So I'm, I asked, I told him that so you are the person to beat. 
so he just laughed and he <laughs> told me that uh, I've been playing this game for 25 years so <laughs> don't stress about it <laughs> you are just a bit uh, starting. A beginner. Okay. yeah yeah so so uh, I'm completely uh, charged to uh, c carry this game forward and uh, to uh, play it next year uh, and keep playing it at national level plus uh, and going uh, at international level when I improve my game. Okay, so your next uh, goal or mission is to beat Steve. Yeah. Huh? Okay, yeah. I'm sure you will beat him. I'm sure. Okay, so um, you participated, you had a good experience, you represented Pakistan there and obviously you had the honor of being the first Asian female uh, to participate in those games. When you came back, uh, I'm sure your friends must have felt so proud, your family and all, they must have been very happy. Yeah. My, what um, was the reaction? Uh, my, uh, so I wasn't expecting anything but uh, my family actually knew that uh, uh, what uh, this entails. They celebrated me a lot mm -hmm. and uh, that is why I, f I felt really cherished and I, 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 I know that uh, I have to give this forward also the way that uh, uh, and that actually empowered me the confidence that I have right now is why uh, is due to the support and the support that my family gave me so uh, the, the motivation the yeah, encouragement yeah. Uh, you know yeah. yeah it is understood that I will uh, my goals are set higher for me not only by myself but my family also because they they have told me that being average is not Good acceptable. enough, not acceptable. Yeah, you have yeah, to be yeah, above yeah. average. Yeah, you have to be excellent. Yeah. Oh, great. So, who has been the most influencing um, personality in your life or person who guided you, mentored you, supported you or influenced your decisions in life? Uh, my entire, I, I'm still harping on that but my entire family, has. Uh, when I say my entire family, I, I mostly mean my mom and my four, uh, my three siblings. Mm -hmm. um, they have been like, they all would say the same thing, but from a different angle. My mom is the most um, resilient supporter, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and she would uh, she would uh, tackle me with different uh, I think so strategies. When I'm down, she will be really helpful and then guilt me into getting <laughs> up, and then when I'll be up. She will tell me this is wrong, this is wrong, and this is wrong. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, done. Okay. And uh, my my sister is the one who is um, who is a, a, such an achiever that uh, I I have no excuse uh, uh, to say that I, uh, I I can do this or a females can't do this because she, uh, she is an entrepreneur. She uh, she has done it all actually. Okay. So so that is why. So she I, has a major influence also yeah. all your life. And my brothers are my constant support. My younger brother uh, uh, was there with me in uh, international blind sports games uh, when uh, he was Potter. Uh, uh, there's a uh, there's a role uh, internationally in uh, visually impaired archery that uh, you need a spotter uh, who tells you where the, your arrows land or who helps you set up, set up your equipment. So my younger brother, who is also good at sports, uh, he was over there. He, uh, he was. Uh, they're communicating with different coaches, uh, maintaining my schedule, doing everything for me, so that I I wasn't able to stress how much about it. Okay. And uh, so so my entire uh, and you have met my elder brother, so yep. he is uh, the <laughs> managing things over here. So my entire family is like. Get to back here. Yeah. You're one lucky person. Huh? Exactly. So um, tell us about uh, your uh, getting into PMDC, the same institution where you went for two years to get your house job thingy done and now you're working for PMDC also? Yeah, yeah. I'm How did that happen? <laughs> Interestingly, um, uh, uh, PMDC is Pakistan Medical Dental Council by the way. Yeah, okay. so I, I started, uh, there uh, There was an op opportunity to apply for there as a government uh, or regulatory bodies have an equal opportunity uh, employment providers, uh, there is a 2% quota for persons with disability, I, I did apply there for uh, some positions and then I got in and um, now I'm working in a in that regulatory body uh, for which I had to fight uh, two years uh, to have my precedence and get my uh, house job. Wow. And what job are you doing there? 
Uh, I'm Which department? In, uh, in examinations, I'm working in, um, as an assistant manager. Okay. And um, so, uh, uh, an examination conducts all the entire national Very exams. Very good. Awesome. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. And you're doing your MBA also. Yeah. I'm actually when are you going to stop? Huh? You're continuously doing things which are making, you know, everyone feel so inspired. Uh, these look, uh, because you you uh, because the, you guys are watching it, them in snapshots. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you see that there's so many things, but they have happened uh, over eight years. or things, different time yeah, frames. Yeah, different time frames. So uh, uh, yeah, I'm a very lazy person also. <laughs> I, I get depressed. <laughs> I, I sleep the entire day also, so I, I'm a normal person. These no. are just, I'm just ambitious, so that's... No, Bakhtawar, I think you are a source of inspiration for so many people. And Pakistan is proud to have you yeah. as a proud Pakistani who's represented Pakistan in these uh, games and, uh, you know, who's done so much, who's so resilient, who's so uh, motivated, who's, who's a go-getter. Uh, with uh, with the kind of uh, situation that you are in, you are still not making it uh, an alibi uh, to not uh, do anything further. So that is amazing. What, what, what uh, faculty are you doing in MBA? Which which specialization? Yeah, I am working, uh, I am studying in health services management, okay. MBA health services management okay. because I actually want to further proceed in health management. Okay. So that's why. And I'm where are you doing it from? Uh, Shifa Tamir Evanlet University. Very nice. And how, uh, are you halfway done? Uh, it's my last semester. It's your last semester. Yeah. And what are your future plans? What do you want to do once you complete your MBA? Do you want to do this job or you have bigger ambitions? Uh, I have bigger ambitions. Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to learn fast at this job. Um, and then uh, I would maybe get another master's degree. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would not reveal anything because okay. uh, let me do it, then okay. I will showcase it. Ah, yeah. So that yeah. means you want yeah. me to come back again once yeah, you've completed it. Yeah, because I, I, you, I just don't want okay, you say, uh, she said so many things that she will do and now she's doing nothing so that. I said whatever you've done is more than enough but you're still continuing, that's amazing, that's an awesome thing. And um, okay, that's great, that's great. Um, what kind of um, message, motivation or encouragement would you like to give to people in Pakistan or elsewhere who are specially abled uh, or who are bogged down due to a certain situation or condition that they are facing for any reason whatsoever. What kind of a message would you like to give to them? Mm, uh, firstly, I would like to tell them that it's really normal. Everybody gets it. Like uh, you will see pictures of people being happy and things like that but there's a picture is a picture, there's an entire story everybody is tested, everybody has their difficulties, do not think that you are alone because actually, um, so I don't take role models which are perfect. Uh, when I was able to see that my mom and my sister isn't perfect, then I was able to actually learn from them. Mm -hmm. Before that, when I, uh, when I thought of them as perfect role models, I wasn't able to really grasp or uh, learn from them because I was like, they are so perfect that what am I going to do, do in, front yeah, of okay. in front of them. So we have to realize that everybody has their shortcomings, everybody is working on them. But uh, what, what my role models taught me, my mom and my sister, were that they are just doing everything. They are trying to um, grow themselves, they are, try, uh, they are renegotiating with themselves, they are uh, re-editing themselves. So like for example, uh, I would say that I don't have any communication skills. But uh, then I will discuss with my sister and then she will tell me that how she is, every day she is thinking about it and then how is she incorporating those changes in her life and she, she just keep working on them. Mm -hmm. So my, uh, my sister is keep working on them and then my mom is working on them. So I have no excuse and I would actually uh, ask everybody to find such role models mm -hmm. uh, in whom you can see those shortcomings and mm -hmm. then, but who also inspires you to keep going and uh, just try to emulate them. Yeah. Great, that's awesome. And how do you motivate yourself when you're really feeling down? Uh, I actually uh, say that I have a, my cut-off points. Like, uh, it's not p uh, possible for me not to do anything. I know um, that 
there's a purpose for this life there's a purpose of this world existing uh, and uh, I have to be answerable uh, for my actions and uh, I do throw myself pity party but uh, then there's a cut off point for this and that pity party also okay so, yeah so 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 when you're really down in your spirits or when you feel that you know it's all coming down and you're doing so much effort but it's not paying off then is there any beacon of light that you look forward to um, I, I would never say that uh, I'm doing so much and it's not paying off because uh, I have this clear understanding that whom I am I doing these things for mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, for uh, being paid or being recognized but mm. just for doing things and uh, exerting myself to the fullest mm -hmm. because, uh, when uh, when I'm not getting the results I know that because I haven't done things to the fullest ah. that's why I'm not getting the results yes uh, that's uh, so uh, my trust in Allah is my beacon of hope because I know he has a greater plan absolutely. But, uh, behind everything yeah absolutely so I think that's very well said that you should never give up and if you feel you're not achieving a certain goal that means you haven't tried enough so you need to keep on exerting your effort and work towards your goal and you will achieve it I tell you uh, you know Bakhtawar has inspired me personally so much and I'm sure once you watch you watch, you watch this program I'm sure you'll have uh, it'll have the same effect on you also uh, Bhaktavar, uh, so many people are watching you right now. I got a special message from you for all the specially abled people. But in general, would you like to say something for everyone and anyone who's watching this program? I would love to say something for Pakistanis. Please. Uh, I would actually uh, like to say that uh, we are not people, uh, we are not a nation. We are, pe uh, we are a group of individuals. Mm -hmm. We really need to think about others and see ourselves as a, our, we need to identify ourselves as a nation uh, so that we can move forward uh, and that is uh, making that space uh, making those resources available for others also yeah. uh, if you're opening a tap just don't leave it open because you know other people also have to yeah. uh, use that water it's just a simple thing uh, this, but that is an, a nation thought and if you are leaving that tap open that's a individual thought so th the small things in your life but you have to recognize that uh, you are a family a nation not an individual absolutely what a lovely thought again stressing on unity and ownership now, this is Pakistan is our country this is our identity we need to own it we need to own each and every bit of it and put in our part to make it a better place and we have to come together on one platform as one nation and that is the only way forward uh, Bakhtawat, such a pleasure talking to you I wish you all the best with your MBA and all your future endeavors and everything that you're doing you're doing great and I'm sure you're going to beat Steve one day in those games and you bring more laurels for Pakistan. Thank I'm you very much. To Steve also. Thank you. Do that. Thank you so very much. With this, we come to the end of this episode of Sky's the Limit. I hope you enjoyed it. Inshallah, I'll be back with another new guest, a new program. Till then, Allah Hafiz.